Singapore. So uh, um, I'm a figure painter, so to speak. <laughs> so today I'm going to show you um, some of my techniques. And uh, those of you who are familiar, not familiar, or are familiar, um, I have actually two DVDs out. Uh, this was recorded in Japan about two years ago. And today I'm going to do some presentations uh, actually from the, the DVDs. So what you have here is uh, the HBO special and this is a live show. <laughs> All right? So you uh, enjoy a more, what do you say, a more casual, more relaxed uh, atmosphere. So if you have any questions if you, uh, you might have, uh, any queries that uh, you may have missed uh, or other things that you have missed up during my demonstration, if you would like to stop me for a while and ask me about uh, what is the, this uh, step is all about, please feel free to do so. Uh, I have uh, two hours, so I don't have anyone doing any demo after me, so basically, right, uh, I will be here all the way till the end of this event. <laughs> right, so uh, before I start, um, let me get ready first. Um, Okay. So thank you for your patience. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh we have a lot of time today, so what we're going to do depending on how much time we have, uh I probably may want to do two things. Uh, we play the one nine scale hit or one -tenth one ten scale hit, and if time permits, we will do a one thirty five. How about that? So uh, I can do two hits in about one hour, but because it's a demonstration, I will stretch it to two hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so otherwise, uh, so I'll just uh, give you a bit of the in terms of the tools that I'm using. Uh, rather the tools, rather the uh, the brushes I use. So particularly for figure painting. Uh, I have with me here basically right two types of brushes. So if you can see, right, let me pull this up. All right, uh, this is the this brush. This is a this is a this is a round brush, a standard round brush, Kolinsky Sable. Uh, the brand is the Neskaya Palitra. It's actually it's Russia. It's a Russian brand. Uh, what I like about this brush is very simple because uh, I call it the T34 brushes. Uh, firstly, it's uh, very it's uh, it's inexpensive. I think it's roughly it's about three euros for, for, for this brush. I bought it for four Singapore dollars, so that translates to about three euros. Uh, and it's, uh, it holds its point pretty well. And uh, of, of late, I'm, uh, I actually prefer this uh, for general painting and for general uh, detailing. I prefer this over the Series 7 brushes. So the main difference between this and the regular Series 7 brushes is that it has, uh, and, it, and to a certain extent, it also has the same design as the, the Spanish Escoda brushes. So just to let you have a look in terms of the, the, the if you see this, this is how it uh, appears like. It is long. So for you, those guys who are not familiar with hand brushing, uh, there's a difference in terms of the design of the brushes. The main point is the, uh, the length of the, the, the bristles, all right? So, I believe some of you guys, if you've been painting for a long time, you like you will sort of like swear by the Series Seven brushes. So let me talk to you about. Basically, I've been painting for quite some time, so I would speak to basically about the the differences between your your Series Seven, which is here, all right, the Series Sevens, as well as the the Nascaya Palitra or the Escoda brushes. So if you look at it and one look, you notice the design is about the same. The only difference is at the length. But if you take a closer look, um, if I were to sort of like uh, just ask you to focus, all right, on the on on the tip here, you notice that if I were to just remove this, the ends look about the same. So actually, when choosing brushes, right, it's not so much in terms of the numbers, the numbers that's, uh, that is of, of of concern. Every manufacturer will have their own number. It's like a currency. So the main thing is to look for is actually the, the tip of the brushes here. Now, the difference between these two brushes is that the Neskaya, the Palitra, is much longer in terms of the bristles. So it can actually draw more paint. So what you're looking at, you're looking at a 50-round magazine and a 100-round magazine. But same 54, 5.56 uh, caliber. <laughs> or NATO rounds, if you prefer. <laughs> All right, so it's just the, the main difference. But so in the case uh, with these two brushes, the usage is also very different in the sense that because it's shorter, it draws less paint. So 
For acrylics, generally, a lot of uh, painters, they don't, uh, a lot of the more seasoned painters I know, okay, a lot of seasoned painters I know, they don't really like this brush because they can't really take in a lot of paint, although it has a sharp tip. So they will prefer something like a Nevsky Palitra, which is much longer if it's a sharp tip, and it can draw more paint. So, and the thing about, uh, if you are familiar with working with oils and enamels, you will like the Series 7 over this. For one reason is that this body is more, it's much softer. So it's very difficult for you if you are using this to push the paint. So this is actually not for pushing paint. This is actually more for unloading paint. So it's basically it's more for unloading. Uh, Series 7s right, are generally much shorter. And as a result, what happens is that it is actually much more useful for you to push the paint. So for oils and people using oils and enamels, because of its short bristles, they find it much significantly much easier to use this to paint. So that is the that is the that's the main difference. Alright? So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to basically write uh, I'm gonna show you guys um, basically how to use the round round brush. And I have another brush here. Uh, this is the flat brush. I use flat brushes for painting uh, figures, right? Not just round brushes. Round brushes I ge use generally sometimes I use it for uh, detailing, but flat brushes I use it for detail uh, for widespread areas. So this is like your general purpose machine gun, your GPMG. So you can take this as your MP40. Oh, sorry, your your Luger, for example. Uh, this is my MP40, and this is my MG34. So you know, I, have, I have basically a section going on down here. So for suppressing fire, this is for create co area coverage, I will use this. Now there's a difference between this sort of brush, the design of this brush. This is a, called a filbert flat brush. Now, um, I believe you guys are Belgians, you know who Francois Verlinden is, right? <laughs> okay, so I want to talk about Francois Verlinden. But um, for me, just a bit of history. Uh, when I was starting out modeling, that was like maybe about 30 over years ago, 35 years ago. Um, I, I, liked, uh, I, I read in the, Verlinden mag uh, the, mo the modeling manual, Verlinden Way 2, that he uses flat brushes for dry brushing. But the thing is that if you look at closely, right, uh, if, you look at it, if you look closely, uh, Verlinden did not disclose much about the flat brush they was using. Uh, most of us, we bought the chisel brush, and we use the chisel brush for dry brushing, you realize it's a bit difficult, you get a lot of brush strokes, a lot of streaks. It's only after that you sort of season that particular brush and suddenly you are able to get the results. So the thing is that what Verlinden failed to disclose in his, in his, uh, in his uh, publication is that he used, uses a filbert brush. The filbert brush is still a flat brush, the only difference is that the head is round. It's round, it's still flat. Now if you buy this brush and you try dry brushing, you get a very different effect. If, okay, that's the thing about this, this particular design. Right? Now, the interesting fact about the filbert brush is it was designed by uh, wildlife painters, particularly birds, to render feathers. So that is something that is, uh, that's, what, that's what makes this brush particularly unique. It is used for rendering soft, uh, what do you call that, uh, soft objects or uh, to create soft effects like smoke, feathers, so on and so forth. So therefore, let's say if you want to get a smooth transition, it makes more sense to actually use a filbert brush to paint over a chisel brush. So the reason why people use a chisel brush is very simple. It's actually used more for painting. It's more for coverage. So if you have a flat surface, you want to sort of give it an undercoat. Generally, the filbert brush will not give you a good tar uh, will not give you a good effect, a re good result. But rather, the flat brush is used for general painting and for undercoats. That's where the flat brush comes comes in. Okay. So basically, this is my introduction. You need to understand these two things because if you don't understand these two things, then you will not understand how we're going to get the results. So the way I sort of like, yes? Is this a synthetic brush? This, is, uh, this one is synthetic. synthetic. Okay. Of course, with synthetic brushes, it will not last as long. All right? So with uh, uh, Kolinsky's, they will last much longer. So it depends on how you use it as well. Right? So if you abuse it a lot, then of course, it's, uh, if, you're, if you are more, more of a heavy-handed sort of uh, modeler, then uh, it might not be a good idea for you to, uh, to, to sort of employ stable brushes. It's better in the long term to actually use synthetic brushes. But if you are more cautious, uh, it may be in the long term more economical to get a and stable your, brush. your filbert brush is a uh, synthetic brush? Yes, this is a synthetic brush. Yeah, and reason or...? Uh... No, it's just based... No, there's no reason. The reason why I choose this brush is because of the cut. Okay. Right? So, cost. Okay. It could be cost. 
And for me, it's just a matter of convenience because I tend to be much more heavy handed. So uh, basically, right, I will, I will just I will go through this very fast and I'll just throw it away. So it doesn't make sense for me. For one, for one, um, for, for one sable brush, I can buy maybe about 10, pack of 10 synthetic brushes, so why not? <laughs> right, so that's the, that's the idea. Yep. Is there any secret in avoiding your tip banding? There's no secret. It's what basically you, it, avoid it? You, you can't avoid it. Basically, right? It is the it is it is the it is the it is the it is the basically the brush. The, wait, it also depends on how you store it. If you store it always like this bent, then it will bend. Yeah, you have to leave it flat. But sometimes it will curl because very right, very simple. It's, they are not stable brushes; they are synthetic brushes. And synthetic brushes have a tendency to, after a while, because they are plastic, they will they will, they will curl by itself. So it's actually due to the it is used due to the the nature of the material that's being used to, to make the brush. So sables are preferred because sables, they don't curl. And if, if someone advertises sable and it curls, then you're not getting actual real sable. Uh, yep. <laughs> so that's what's happened when you buy anything with Chinese inscriptions here. You gotta be careful, although it's one euro. <laughs> See, that's, that's my advice. I'm Chinese, I know. <laughs> All right, <laughs> okay. So yeah, so it's better, right? Even the Russians are doing better brushes than the Chinese. Let's let's put it this way, <laughs> right? Okay, so all right, so moving on. So what I'm going to talk about uh, before we talk about colors, right? Um, I'm going to talk a bit about how to sort of like um, handle the paint, and that's the most important thing, right? Before anything else, before like you know, uh, and there's something that a lot of step by step, uh, what they call articles, they fail to mention. This, this is the boring part that nobody wants to show. They want to show the glamorous steps that you have that you take to achieve that spectacular result. But what I'm going to show you today, because it's a live show, I'm going to show you what goes on behind the scenes. All right, I'm going to show, let's see if you make a mistake, how can you rectify, so on and so forth. So you see some of my countermeasures being applied uh, in, in this particular demonstration. All right, so first things first, let's get ready. Um, what I'll do basically, right, since we have a lot of time, two hours is a long time. Um, or rather, enough time. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to probably demonstrate to you guys in terms of how I handle the colors. So once you understand the basic idea and the concept of how I handle colors, then it makes sense to understand why I am adopting such a, a way or method of painting. All right. So what you have here today, ladies and gentlemen, is a tour into my mind. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, some rooms are locked. Better kept unlocked. <laughs> All right, but as far as small things concerned, how I'm, uh, I, I go about. So you can see the way I'm actually tapping the, the, the brush, um, the, the, the agitating the, 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 um, the bottle, is such that I will hit it on my palm such that the pigments sort of like mix well with the binder. This is important, especially for bio, uh, bio paints. If the binder do not combine well with the pigments, chances are you will get a sort of satin, if not a satin effect. That's especially for bio. And the thing about Baiho is that the pigments are much heavier, so it takes a while for the binder to sort of like uh, get blend mixed, right, with the with the pigments. So I'm going to use white. Okay. So in this case, we just put a, a bit of white here. Now, for any beginner, I'm assuming, uh, okay, for the big, from the perspective for the beginner, it's like when they sort of you know they take the take the brush. They just dip the paint and then they directly apply it onto the surface like this. Pop. Right? Now, this is the number one thing. This is the one number one no-no. Uh, as you can see, uh, the paint is thick, it gets runny, you get a very uneven surface. That is what we want to, to avoid, especially, right? Especially if coming to so for, uh, not for undercoating. But bear in mind, what we are doing here is not undercoating. We are talking about uh, getting, attaining grad gradients. So from dark to light, light to dark, so on and so forth. So we are achieving gradients. So, so the way I do, the way we need to do, things you need to do is you have a discipline, if a system of uh, maintaining a pain discipline. So what does it mean by pain discipline? It means right, you must make sure that the right amount and the right uh, uh, consistency of paint is present on the brush before you apply onto the surface. Uh, okay, so. This case, right, you can see the paint is very thick. You put it up, it's very heavy. It's for undercoating. So if you want to get so far like, like a smooth gradient, what you need to do is you need to thin the paint down a bit. So normally what I do is I draw a bit of water. I'll thin the paint down, all right? Let's say for example, a bit of maybe about two drops of water to this, and I let it down. Now, if you notice something, 
the pane gets overloaded, it gets very runny. All right? You can see it gets very runny. You can just shake it down a bit. You, can, you see it starts to flow. And that's what you won't want because especially with water, you do not want it to scatter all over the surface. All right? So what you need to do before you start to apply on the surface, right, is to be when you draw, once you start to draw out the paint, is to first unload it. And after that, lay, lay it down. And you get a soft effect. You can see from here, you can get a soft effect. So it's basically drawing the paint, unloading it, and then applying onto the surface. Uh, what you have here is basically uh, what you want to look. What you want to look out for is basically that the, the paint brush has to be moist, not wet. This is wet. <laughs> All right. This itself, if you draw, drain it out and you apply, this is moist. When it's moist, you can notice that because of the water, it spreads easier. And this is how you're, you can notice that the strokes are very weak. Now that is what we want to achieve when you're talking about getting, uh, achieving gradients. So once you're able to get a weak stroke, from here you're able to use this to build up your shadows and, build, and also build up your highlights. And at the same time, you also can use this method to do color corrections as well, which I'm going to show you guys how to go about doing it. <coughs> Say the skin tones is very gray, it's very black, there's too much brown. How do I remedy that? I will show it to you later. All right? So it's all in this. This is basically what we are dealing with. It's like, almost like filters. So filters, in a sense, if you're applying a very thin layer of paint. So it's almost like, for example, um, if I take a cellophane uh, paper here, translucent cellophane paper, I put it over here, you can see that the, uh, you can see that, uh, you can see a bit, still a bit of me, but the, the, the intensity may not be that high. So what we are dealing with here is basically, right, um, a gradual buildup of tones. So, I'm going to show you one demonstration now. This is an exercise that you guys can, you can, if you guys want, you can go home and practice this. Take some, basically, right, paint, water, dilute it until it's like very, um, you can see from here. So this is the paint. I take a bit of water here, and then from here I stir it up. All right. And from here I will unload. Okay, until it's moist. How you know it's moist, you just test it on a piece of paper here. And you can see it should have a soft line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a long, okay, you can see I'm going to pull a line here like this. All right, one line first. Okay, start again. Unload. I'm going to pull a, look, there's something on this. Okay, we're going to pull a line, let's say all the way up to this point here. All right. Now, another thing about painting is that people they don't know is that the speed of your brush is important. All right, so there are two things. How much the paint to water ratio, that's the first thing. Second thing is how fast you are you dragging your, your, your brush. If it's very fast, you get this. If it's very slow, you get more control. And another thing is that if you, you lift it up, you notice that there is a tail, there's a tailing off. The paint accumulates here. So if you want to get a smooth finish, this is what I recommend you to do. This is what I normally do. I draw, drain this off. Make it moist, and what I do is that I will lay, I will sort of move the brush down, and then I will pull it up slowly. Right? This is like calligraphy. <laughs> this is Chinese calligraphy. All right. So in Chinese calligraphy, when you handle the brush, all right, the philosophy is that only the tip touches the surface. The problem with amateurs is that the whole brush goes down, and then you have like you know. You pull it down, you drag it down, this is what you get, dry brushing. Okay? Now, so it produces a different stroke, but this is not the type of stroke we want for this partic in this particular instance. Alright? So, this, this is, this is a... So, water and this, drain it out. And you can see basically, right, if I, if I were to work slow, and you can see, you can, you can see if I were to work uh, very slow, and I were to pull the, the stroke out from here, down and I lift it up you notice that the end tails off nicely and if I were to drain it up a bit more and I were to do that let's say I will work with this line here oops can you see okay sorry okay so if I work let's say if I work with this line here if I land it down and I pull it up okay is this working yeah. all right Okay, so, so, 
So we have first pass, second pass. This is the third pass here, we can see. Right. Right. So I'm going to pr produce a shorter stroke. Fourth pass. Again, I'm not loading up the brush again. This is the, still the same load of uh, paint on the brush. Fifth pass. Sixth pass. Seventh pass. As you can see, as I shorten my strokes, you notice what's happening? I'm getting my transitions. And it's very easy. Just one, just one color, a single color. Just a single color. Just only this is just only controlling opacity. This is just only controlling opacity. You can actually get a highlight this way. You can see from here, you can, from here you can see that the, 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 gradient, the, the gradient showing up. So this is what we are, we are talking about here. Now, working this way allows you to preserve the saturation of the color. So what do you mean by preserving the saturation of the color? So let's say I've got green here. Let's say I put a bit of green. Let's say I've tinned the green down with a bit of water. All right. This is deep green. So same thing. What I'm going to do, drain it out. Test it out again. Make sure it's moist. And look here. As I pull this across, notice what happens. You get, you, you, it's the same color, you still get your contrast. And we are not using grays. We are not mixing black into the whole entire thing. What you have is the purity of color. We are able to sort of preserve the saturation as a result. Now, a lot of methods are used to sort of achieve gradients. One of which is to, at every interval grad, gradient, you have a different color until you sort of graduate to this particular color, there's a problem with that method of approach, you lose saturation. Because every color is unique, or every color has, is either a tint or a shade, meaning that it's been add, white has been added to it, making it uh, chalky, or black has been added to it, making it gray. So if you find that your models look grayish, or look very pastel, very lifeless, that's the reason. It's because white and gray or brown has been added to the, the original color. So if you look at the way I'm working right now, all right, taking the paint, this is the first pass. I can go over with the second pass. You notice, there's a look at the saturation. Okay, so fourth. Fifth. So you can see right now, this, this is what we have. You got a gradient. We're just only using two steps, all right? So my system, basically, right, uh, my system, the philosophy behind this is very simple. Most modelers struggle with two things in painting. First is actually getting contrast. Second thing is actually trying to get a color saturation. These are the two things the modelers always struggle. So what happens is that if I want to get contrast, what I do, I add white or black to the base color. When you add white or black, as I mentioned earlier, you get either gray or you actually get uh, uh, pastel, pink or something like that. You, you graze it or you basically makes it chalky. So in the, in, if to get a thin contrast, you sacrifice saturation, the color quality. In this way of working, basically, right, you are actually preserving both. You're getting both contrast and you're also getting color saturation. So, in terms of my philosophy when, when coming on my system, all right, I won't say it's philosophy, but it's a, it's a system. System is the first deal with the contrasts, attaining the tonal contrast, monochromatic contrast, and from there, you start to work on towards the colors. So in this case, you can see with this particular example, right, what I have here, uh, I use the airbrush just for sake of convenience. Normally, I use a spray can, right, but uh, in this case, I have access to the airbrush, so why not? So, how I spray this is very simple. Um, basically, what we have is black and white. So black, the, the, this particular sample, or this, uh, this example here, uh, why well, I flipped it upside down and I sprayed it black from the bottom down. This, the black is to represent uh, the shadows, all right? Then I tilt it up right side up, and I use the white and I misted it over. 
So if you can understand this, basically this is a bit of a pre-toning. The white represents the, the direction and angle of light fall. So what you have, you have the, luminance, the luminosity appearing right now. So it's very straightforward. So the only thing is that you have to be a bit more careful in terms of not to overdo this, otherwise everything becomes flat. <laughs> so enough, you can see, um, based on the sort of the scattering of the paint, you can see that the certain areas appear gray, right? They are gray not because the gray paint has been applied, but rather you have like, you know, uh, a larger sort of a larger, larger spread of the, uh, the, the, um, the, the pigments onto the area, right? Larger scattering of the pigments over the particular area, okay? So what I'm going to do now, once you understand what I'm doing right here with this particular simple exercise, I'm going to show you what we're going to do now with, uh, with painting of the, uh, to paint the, the face, okay? So any questions up to this point in time? Okay, it is very lengthy because, right, this is something that you need to do. Otherwise, right, what you're going to watch is a magic show. You will see things happen in a fraction of a second and you do not know what happened. That's why this, is, this part is important. This is season one. We're going to move into season two now. <laughs> All right, that is what it means. Most of you guys, if we come in, most step-by-step -step articles, they will tell you season two. Basically, you'll see that you play the, put the paint here, you use this paint, you put it here, 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 here. Where those articles will tell you where to put the paint, but very few will explain to you, if, if, for, if not any at all, will explain to you how to apply the paint. So this section is what I'm trying to do, is right, how to apply the paint. And if you understand uh, how I'm doing it, then now you will be able to understand why I'm doing this. <laughs> all right? Okay. So next stage. Right, so we're going to deal with the flash. We're going to give, deal with the flash tones now, right? So I'm going to show you this method. Uh, those of you guys who have never wanted to try figure painting, but just to feel that it's too intimidating to try, well, this is something that you may want to consider. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to work with just a few colors. All right. It may seem bizarre at first. This is what you know, it may seem very bizarre, but uh, just bear with me. All right, I'm going to use green and I'm going to use a bit of orange here. Okay, we are not going to touch the we are not going to touch the um, the flesh tones at this point in time. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's see. I'm going to create a tone. Where's my black camo? All right. Okay, I'm going to create something a bit. Okay, do this. Okay, deep green. Right. So, if in case you guys are wondering, what does green have any business to do with flash painting of the flesh tones? I'll explain later. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm adding a bit of Tamiya flat base. This is a habit of mine. I don't really trust uh, by Bali Joe paints at this point in time because sometimes they will give you gloss, sometimes they make, sometimes they make gloss up, sometimes they will give you matte. So this is sort of an insurance that I've, uh, uh, that I've that's, that's always been a habit of mine. All right. So, so I've got green here, and I've got a bit of uh, orange here. All right, so I'm gonna just leave the orange alone. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, like a few gray color. So using the two tones of the uh, camo black brown here, okay, to just uh, sort of cut the saturation of the green. I don't want it to be too bright. Oh, incidentally, if you guys are asking, right, this is actually not baking paper, this is actually wax paper. This doesn't go into the, uh, wax paper is different. You can, you guys can, uh, I've got a sample here. You can sort of like distribute it around and see. Uh, wax paper is actually much thicker. It is not for bake, used for baking. It's actually used more for presenting cookies and all this. Uh, those of you who are married, uh, you, your spouse does a lot of baking, then yes, uh, you may ask her about this wax paper. The wax paper is actually more resilient. It has a layer of wax on top, that's why it can't go into the oven. But it holds the paint better. I mean, sort of, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't tear or break as easily as baking paper, all right? So there's another thing that below here, in terms of this wet palette, I have this, this sponge, and this is a piece of napkin. The reason for putting a napkin is to prevent the, the edges of the, the um, wax paper from curling up. So it's just basically that to just hold it down, that's all, all right? So, a bit of green. And I'm going to take just a bit of white. I'm just going to mix it in there, just to sort of get this, uh, this, this tone here, this greenish tone. 
Maybe I'll just add a bit more brown. This one is a bit much dirtier, a bit. Okay. Or rather, I want to make it slightly darker. Alright, so you can see basically, right, I have a like, bit of the field grey colour going on here. Okay, so now I have this, this is out now. And you can see as I stir this, right, the, the wax paper doesn't tear. That's the reason why I use wax paper. If it's baking paper, then it's, uh, it's going to be something else altogether. So I'm adding a bit of water now. Alright, so at this stage, right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to, uh, I'm going to introduce something else. This is called a flow enhancer. Uh, it's a it's a Balejo uh, Baiho uh, Baiho um, flow uh, airbrush flow enhancer. I uh, sort of packed it, repacked it in this side here. I'm going to add, just add one drop to it. Okay. So those of you guys right want, I can, you can just put up your fingers, right? Uh, just put your finger it, and you just rub it in between your thumbs here. Okay. You notice it's very slippery. <laughs> right. So uh, just a raise of hands. How many of you guys here work with enamels and oils? Generally, right? Okay, so very simple. The, the main problem, right, if you guys have been exposed to acrylics, you know that if you add water, right, it's sort of like, it's very difficult for the, for, for the, for the paint to flow because, right, when you deal with water, you're dealing with, like, you know, water droplets like this. So it's very difficult for you to sort of, like, pull a very nice, straight, even line, unlike oils and enamels. Now, this is the game changer here. If you just add a bit of the flow enhancer, and if you, felt it, if you feel it, felt it in your hands, it's like, it's a bit, very, it's very slippery, it's a bit greasy. Now, that's, that is, that is the, the medium that is going to convert, right? This is going to convert your acrylics to a bit more like an oil-like property, right? That, so, that is, those are the mediums that you can use. So, this is called the airbrush flow enhancer. That's the one that's, that is the ticket, right? So, again, what it does, why I'm using this for this particular case is because I want the, uh, the, I want this to flow better. There's a reason why they call it flow enhancer, so that it allows it to flow. Now, if I use the water, just slowly on water, all right, you're gonna have this problem, right? You're gonna take this is with water, without the flow enhancer. You, you're gonna end up, you know, you can see the bubbles and all this. All right, that's what you don't want. It's like, oh, right, then you start like, you know, you try to scatter it away and you sort of like smooth it in out. Now, with the flow enhancer, basically, right, what you have, if you're making the paint more slippery, so I've already added some of flow enhancers here and I can dilute it with water, right? And just turn it around to this side here, okay? And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to scatter it all over. I'm just going to look at where the gray areas are. It's very easy to recognize because once you spray them, the white areas are going to be where the flash tones are going to be. So what I'm going to do with the green is I'm going to sort of, uh, re sort of control the effects of the gray with this with this uh, with this green here all right so i'm going to just take a, make a darker i think i'll make a darker color all right so load unload and i'm going to test it out on, on this. this is this is the reason why see and it should be very smooth and i'm just going to just paint it like this is here and you notice that there's no it's actually much smoother and there are no brush strokes that's the best part about it. So I'm going to use this to place it at the, in the eyes here, back of the nose, all right? Maybe at the bottom of the mouth here. All the gray areas, that's it. Okay, right? So you can see one side a bit like an incredible hawk. Okay, so on this side here, same thing. Uh, this line here, this is the boundary here, this is where the gray is. I'm going to just place it down. And you notice something about my strokes. I'm just going over the area once. I'm not going up and down a lot of times like this. And I'm not going up, right? First layer, first bit for the dry, and then the second layer, and just going over again. And that's how you get the very smooth, ef the smooth effect. Notice, right, it's, what, what is the reason why it gets so smooth? You can see it's because, right, I'm working with moist paint. See, the word here is moist, right? Not heavy. Okay, for oils, you will take something thick and you spread it around like butter. And then you wait for a day, and then you repeat again, and wait for another day to add on. <laughs> that's the problem, that's the, uh, that's, or if not, you put it in the crock pot, heat it up, hope that things don't melt, you know. <laughs> and then you sort of continue. See, this is one of the, so again, you can see I can repeat with this process with the eye and with the nose here. Okay, 
And I can sort of, like, if I want it to be much stronger, I would sort of like, you know, go over again. If I want my green to be much stronger this way, right below the chin here, the down plane, just like that, okay? Now, the reason why I'm using green, all right, Alex, it's because, very simple, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over with, with uh, orange, okay? So, those of you guys who remember what this, uh, just a bit of a quick lesson in the color theory, uh, both green and orange are complementary, uh, secondary colors. When you mix your complementary colors together, you will get a tertiary color, which is a brown. So rather than mixing them together and get a very filthy, murky brown, I'm going to use, like, I still want a bit of the orange, I still want a bit of the green. I don't want them to be overpowering each other. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take orange, a bit of the orange here. This is bright orange, by the way. A bit of the uh, flow enhancer. Just a bit, just one drop to the rest, just to make the paint a bit slipperier. All right. And uh, a bit of water, just to, con just to make it a bit more translucent, drain it out, and then test it out on my hands. You can see this, you can test it out. So you can see it's actually very, very thin. I'm gonna just make it slightly thinner a bit more. So it's actually basically, right, what you're doing right now is I'm, I'm making it as, getting the right opacity. So it's getting very thin. So what I'm gonna do now, just observe, is over the green areas, right? So I'm gonna turn it around. You can see where the green areas are. I'm gonna just paint it over with the orange. Now. You notice something very interesting happening. It doesn't look like green anymore, doesn't it? So what you have is that you are you're actually, you're not actually mixing colors. What you're doing is you're layering and filtering the colors out. Now this will give you a different quality of brown. See that? It's very thin. And the reason is also because I'm using the filbert brush. All right, okay. I'm not very skillful. I just know what sort of tools to use. That's it, getting the right tool, all right? Okay, so you can see right now I have this. So if I want to, if I, if I want to, I can even put another layer over. So they can be more, drawing a bit more of this orange here. And I can just move another layer here. You can see the, the effect is much softer. So if you guys want, I can just bring it. You guys can bring it around. You can see, one half is actually in green. The other half is actually in with the, 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 that overcoat, that thin filter of orange that I've, I've applied. Okay, and you can see that if they can see that because I've, I've controlled my colors, they are very thin. You can see on, uh, on on my glove here, on the latex glove here, it's very thin, and that's how I work. It's like watercolors, right? So that is the first one of the first basic steps. So while you guys are looking at the, the, the sample, I'm gonna sort of mix a flash tone now. Uh, this is like a darker flash tone. Uh, this is to basically, we're gonna to work towards the highlights now. So I'm gonna show you guys how to, we're gonna to work towards the highlights. Okay, so, let's see now, let's Okay. So I have a bottle of sunny skin tone. I'm going to use crimson from. Uh, I'm going to use the crimson from Andrea. All right. Uh, you can use pink also or magenta from uh, or that violet from Bioho. All right. I just happen to have this around. So next, I'm going to use a bit of chocolate brown here. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna possibly go, but probably gonna do is gonna cut a sort of a, a, a dark flesh tone here, right? So at this stage, right, I'm not going to sort of like put in a lot of, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'll try to avoid the whites as much as possible, okay? Because the problem with the whites, if I'm gonna use flesh right now, there's a problem with the flesh, meaning that it's going to cause the paint to turn chalky, and I do not want that to sort of go into the mid tones, right? I still want to preserve that sort of the saturation. So a bit of the orange here, a bit of the crimson. Okay, a bit of the dark brown here. So I have this like this particular tone here. All right, you can see now it's, it's very thick. So on my hand, you can see it's very thick. I'm gonna thin it down. So on when you look at this, what we have here, I'm gonna just thin it down. So 
So you can see it's actually very, it's uh, so I'm just putting it like this. And I'm, once I'm happy, I'm just take a, just a little drop of the uh, flow improver. So that it's sort of like it can, it can flow nicely into the crevices, flow and crevices. That's the thing, see, it just makes it slippery. Think of it as loop for pain, huh? okay? Right? So it sort of lubricates the pain. Okay, yep. All right, so okay, it's complete its tour. <laughs> right, so once we have this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this particular tone here, all right? And sort of like, uh, I can use this to, in a variety of ways, I can go over, let's say, let's say for the highlights here, right? Uh, I think it's a bit too dark. I'll just take a bit here. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna get a dark, dark, different flash tone here. Okay. Not too much. Okay, so. Right, I think this is good. The orange for warmth, okay. All right, so I'm just going to, where the highlights are, I'm just going to use this and I'm going to paint it over. The whites here, you can see that. And you just need to go once, all right? That's the thing about the, that's the, that's, that's, that's the thing about it. We just go once, wait for it to dry. Now, if you look at the boundaries, because you're working very thin, all right, the boundaries, right, we do not need to worry too much about the boundaries. We can always, there are always opportunities to repair the boundaries by using this darker tone here. So let's say, for example, I can still see the green, if I don't like that, I'm going to use a bit of the crimson and the orange here, all right? So, just drain it up like this and look at the boundary here. This is a darker boundary and we're going to just use it to mediate. So you can see there's another line coming here. There's another line coming here. This is where the jaw is. It's the chin. And you can see that this is the... Uh... Okay, you can bring it around now. It's very fast. <laughs> so it's not magic, it's just having a proper system. <laughs> All right, okay. So you can see that basically, right, what we did, just a recap, all right, uh, we just established tones, tonal values first to get the contrast. And then once we got the contrast, we just established what you call color. We just you, use, what I'm doing right now is I'm just what, from focusing on getting the color saturation. And if you look carefully in terms of how I use the paint, I'm using it very thinly, applying very thinly, and just a single stroke, just a single stroke. Um, the worst thing you can do is to go up and down because this is not oils, right? You don't need to do this. All you need to do is just be confident, take a deep breath and just one stroke, just pull it up, gent nice and gentle and that's it, it's done, <laughs> right? So it's very quick, it's very swift. If you, if you spend too much time fiddling with it, it's going to get worse, <laughs> all right? So as I like just imagine, it's like, um, the, the, okay, another thing about also applying the paint is that you must always, uh, when you sort of lay on, when you sort of like lay on the brush on the surface, right? You need to remember something. Uh, just imagine you're applying ointment on an open wound, all right? If you like press the, the medication the ointment down onto the open wound, it's gonna scream. So think of it as basically, if you wanna get a very soft line, um, basically what you need to do is that the brush, the bristle has to be touching the surface softly and slowly and as if, as, as if you are applying, right, uh, ointment over an open wound onto yourself. So if you're gentle, slow and gentle, you just touch it gently and just pull it up, you'll get a soft effect. If you want to get a hard effect, you press it down, thick paint, press it down, and then you get a very harsh effect. And then you're going to have to worry in terms of how you want to sort of uh, mediate the boundaries, right? So for me, I don't do that. So you can see it's very quick. It's very efficient. So you've never, if you, let's say if you're an aircraft modeler, or a ship modeler, even like a car, um, like an automobile modeler, if you want to start a bit of figure painting, you just need to understand this very, very simple system, this very simple rule, you should be able to get pretty decent results, okay? So if you want to like sort of push to the next level, then yes, you will need to apply, you need to basically increase the, uh, the frequency of the applications. That's it, <laughs> right? So I've shown you guys, is actually what I've shown you guys is actually very simple, you know? 
you can get, and you can see right now this part here, this doesn't appear like green anymore because of the orange. So when, the, when the, that orange goes over the green, right, it produces a bit of a gray, grayish tone. And if let's say if you want it to be much brighter, for example, I've got orange here, right? Orange is one of the colors to like, sort of bring it up. You can dilute it, apply like a filter, all right? And you can sort of like, you know, you can, you can transform the, you can sort of like transform the, the saturation of the colors down here, from here. So you can just, you can use orange, you can actually use browns. Uh, technically speaking, I won't recommend browns because browns have a tendency of making it dirty. Especially when browns go over white, that's it. You end up um, make, making the surface, the white surface dirty. So always we try to look for at least brighter colors, like at least yellow or at least an orange. But uh, nothing, no tertiary colors. Keep it within the primary colors. And uh, if you sort of, uh, so from here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna complete over to the other side. The other side is pretty easy. So I need to do, as I said, um, we go from this tone here. All right, I'm gonna just swap it out. Okay, go with one layer first. This is without the, uh, see, without the flow enhancer, you see bubbles starting to appear. <laughs> so I'm going to just put in a flow enhancer. Before I flow enhancer, basically right, uh, stops the paint from behaving like water. <laughs> well, and, and that's, uh, I would say, that's that in a nutshell, I think that's, that's what, I think it's, up, I think that it's uh, more, that's a more appropriate way of defining it. Okay. Okay, so a bit of pink here. Uh, so if I use a bit of pink and go into white, you can, uh, sorry, the pink and go into white, you can see the surface is very, very um, dull, very flat. So I'm going to use a bit of orange first. So just to get a bit more warmth. So here, going down, once. So I'm very careful not to go over the same spot twice. All right, if, if, if that spot is not, uh, it's not covered, don't worry, wait for it to dry and then go over again because we are working with very thin colors. Okay. So I can go, I can sort of like move from left to right, right to left, right. So I'm adding, uh, going on, to adding more saturation. And you can see, I'm using a white brush and you don't have any brush strokes. And because I'm using the filbert brush, I'm able to get a very nice soft transition because of the filbert brush. <laughs> and later on, if I need to, uh, if I want to sort of um, get the finer details, I can go in later with the, uh, the liner brushes. Okay. So this is, uh, I would call this step uh, fire for effect. This is like artillery bombardment. Okay, so we have already, we can see, uh, we can just place the tones uh, here. All right, so I'm gonna work very fast now so that we can move on and progress to the next stage. And if time is not a limitation, we can go on to 135 scale as well. So uh, perhaps I will just introduce you guys to some of the solutions uh, you guys can, can employ for uh, painting 135 scale figures. So. Yep, so it's too heavy here on the, the pink. So you notice right now what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm deliberately like messing this thing up a bit for you guys. So now you can see the tones here is very pinkish. Uh, how do I sort of, uh, if it's too pinkish, what I'll do is that I mean it's too much red. So what I can do sometimes to countermeasure is I use a bit of yellow instead of the pink and maybe adding a bit of the green to turn it a bit more to, to sort of like control the saturation of the red okay so now going back again with the yellow so I'm going to try to stop this from appearing like it's an impressionist uh, or even worse still a uh, Forvis painting <laughs> So I'm gonna use a bit of um, pink here. Pink is strong enough to sort of like um, serve as a countermeasure against the green that we have previously applied. 
So I'm just going to just put in the highlight here, dab it here, turn it around, around the nose, cheekbone here. Okay, in the eye sockets here as well. So again, same, I'm not loading new paint, huh? you can see this. So I'm just like dabbing the paint on. Going slowly and softly, that's it. And it's actually very easy. So now, um, if I want to, I can, uh, I'm gonna probably gonna get some highlights out now. I'm going to use a bit of the uh, flash here. The, sorry, not flash. The, um, this particular color is a salmon rose. I'm using. To take this out. All right, and I can use this to sort of like um, okay, get a bit of flow enhancer in as well. So I can I can get a good, nice and smooth finish. Okay, so I'm going to just use this and just just dab slightly a bit on the nose. Bit on the chin. Okay. The cheekbone as well. So generally, if you ask me for 135 scale, these are the areas I would first uh, sort of like place my highlights. Okay. And then this part here with the muzzle here coming out from the wing, of, coming out from the corner of the mouth there. And then at least the front of the mouth here. Okay. So a little bit of the chin here. Right, so you can see right now it's actually very rough here. You can see the, the brush strokes are very heavy. So, how do I mediate this? So, in case let's say you don't need to worry about it, so what you do is I'm going to find, find, find a mid tone in between this and the orange. Okay, and I can sort of like test it out on, on, on the piece of paper or on this case by the glove here, and I can sort of like you know just dab the color on, see what happens. <laughs> And then just paint it down like this. Just one, sh just pull, just a line there. Okay. So with the mouth here as well. Yep. And just go back here again with a bit of the. Uh, flesh tone here so I, I guess most of you guys will have your own system of painting your own uh, sort of like palette so a bit of the lip here the lower part of the lip here okay so we are still at this point in time still working on the, the general tones at least the larger areas first before proceeding down to the, the, the final details All right Okay, so I think on the one on the left is more or less done. Uh, the, the, the right part of the face. Now I'm going to move on to the left part. So I'm going to just like work very fast here. Okay. On the mouth here, the mouth pillar, the lower lip. I'm going to undercoat this part here with flesh. All right, still very pale. Not to worry too much. Okay, so you can see what's happening now, and you can see notice uh, if you look at the uh, if you look at the um, the amount the frequency in terms of, of me going to the palette to draw paint is actually very low, <laughs> right? Okay, I think uh, a bit of a highlight for the eyes there. I'm using flash for the highlights for the eyes, just to pull it out. Yep. Okay. So you guys can have a look at this, this over here. I sort of like soften it out already. So you can see the effects itself, they are very weak, all right? They're very soft. So that is, this is basically right, the, the, the second stage. We sort of get the, uh, the, the contrast and then now we are sort of playing with the colors, getting the colors out. And I'm playing with just, uh, as you can see, I'm play, playing with a lot of very, very primary colors so just to get the saturation. 
Okay. So the next stage is going to have to we're going to do is going to start to define the details. Okay. So uh, while you guys are looking at that, maybe I'll just speak a bit about this. Um, can we see a 35 scale here? All right. So let's say let's do a 35 scale hit. Can we see this? All right. For 35 scale hit, the same uh, same approach as well. So. Normally what I do for 35 scale, there are a few ways you can do it. You can paint directly from here. Uh, if you want, as an alternative approach, if you want to have a much stronger sort of highlights coming out, what you can also do is to actually use a bit of the white. And just only just white, not without the, the green yet. All right. And sort of um, use this and just sort of like place this in to get the highlights of the face. So this is a Tamiya figure I'm using. So um, I can, you can see I am actually using uh, you can see very thin paint just to get the upper lid, the cheekbones about here. So this is actually white, and I'm using this just to define the uh, the grey. The, uh, the the first set head is uh, traveling back here. Okay, so you can see I'm defining this. I'm gonna use a bit of brown first, just to get the chin. Oh, maybe not. It's a bit of the field gray here, the color here. I'm gonna sort of there's a bit of a spillover for the for the for the for the lip. I'm gonna just paint this in. So you can see for 135, after I sort of give it a black undercoat, I missed it, a, uh, give a mist of flat white from the top down to represent where the light fall is. And then what I do is, uh, what I did now is I use white to sort of like pull out further the highlights, only just focusing on the highlights. And what I'm going to do later on, because for 135 you, you did really need more contrast, right? Uh, you, you, if you try to play this out with the 110 scale, it's not, it, you're going to lose this, uh, the natural appearance. So that's why I'm doing this uh, as an additional step for the, I'm applying this additional step for the 135 scale head. prepare another set of colors here. Um, I'm using this color here, it's called the Queen of Credome Crimson. And okay, this is actually, the, this color is actually much uh, darker and deeper than some of the colors that are available in the Bayou range. It's actually from Golden. So I use this especially for basically like painting details like the, the blush on the cheeks as well as the lips. And maybe even sometimes in the eyes there, All right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move on to painting the details like the eyes, getting more of the highlights and defining some of the uh, the finer details. So I'm gonna use a bit of blue here. I'm gonna use the blue about here. Um, perhaps even some light blue. Okay, so these are, these are gonna, I'm gonna use those for the eyes. Okay, maybe a bit of black as well, just in case. Alright, 
So now we're coming in right now. Um, we're going to go in with this. All right. So you can see I've got a bit of flash stones coming up. Uh, the flash stones are out already. Okay. So um, probably I'm going to sort of pull out a bit more of the highlights now. Just a bit more. Just one, one final step. Oops. See this? Right. Good. Okay. So the first layer is dried. So I'm going to just use this and just go slow on the cheek here, upper lip, chin, nose, nostrils. So you can see right now this part at this stage, I'm applying actually very, very, just only just very strategically, just only applying a very small area. So as you can see, as, the, as we have started to move into the highlights, the areas right become much uh, narrower so it's not that uh, most people right why they get the whole face to be flat is because right they do not restrict the they do not constrict the area in terms of the highlights they apply one big flat area so instead of having one big flat area what we're doing is that the area shrinks and gets smaller and smaller so you can see if, as you can see this you can see this is a concentric circle that's leading towards the uh, the highlights. It gets so soft. It gets uh, as you can see, gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And the chin here, as well as the nose and the lip. All right. So once we got a general idea there, now it's going to paint the lips. So for me, when I do the lips, uh, I'll use like a, a brown, uh, orange, orange brown. So quinacridone crimson, a bit of orange, a bit of the uh, the brown here. Chocolate brown. Now the thing about painting the lips is that you do not want to make it look like it's, it's uh, this. It looks like he's wearing lipstick, All right? So we want to make it as uh, as natural as possible. So I'm going to use a bit of crimson in this case, All right? So a bit like a pink, maybe a bit of orange. Okay, something along these lines here. Now to paint the lips, right? There's not. I personally I don't like to paint it too thick. So what I'll do is I would dilute it. I'll dilute the paint. So you can see from here, you can see it's actually very thin. Uh, let's put in a bit of flow enhancer as well. Okay. All right, where were we? All right, so you can see something along these lines here. And then we sort of like, apply a wash across so it, it's you can see it's not opaque it's actually very soft last thing we want is a trend the soldier to look like a transvestite <laughs> so you can see I'm just applying for the from the uh, the top there you can see that we are working with opacity that's it that's only using opacity it is not strong you can see Ah, uh, you see, much better, right? You can see, as you can see right now, and it's also very, the reason why we also undercoated it with a bit of the flesh. It serves as a, a uh, it serves as a nice base to reflect the color, right? So we, we always go back to this uh, this simple this uh, uh, this simple principle again. That's what we are doing here, what we did earlier on. We are taking this and applying a different color, and this time for the lips. Right, so the sides there, if you want to sort of make it darker a bit, the top here a bit darker, I'm going to use a bit of uh, maybe a bit of more brown. And this time again, looking at the control of the color here, you just apply the wash on top here, the so darker tone here to the corner there. Okay, and maybe the sides here as well. Okay, so you can see now the lips are, are done. Not, not complicated at all, <laughs> right? See, once you keep your, if you keep your colors right uh, thin, it's actually very easy to paint this out, <laughs> right? So I'm going to define the nose a bit more. Uh, just darken it a bit. I think it's a bit too heavy, too, too, too dark. Oh, sorry, too light. Uh, the lower part of the, the, the chin here. So I'm just applying like, like, a, like a pink tone here. Okay. And now maybe perhaps we're going to move on to the eyes there. I'm going to use a bit of red. 
and a bit of the same color for the lips especially. And what I'm going to do now, hey, can we see this? Okay, you can see this, huh? no problem. So we're going to just paint it in. So we're just going to paint in the top and the bottom here. That's it. And the upper lid right about here. Okay, this is the lower lid here. We're going to paint this part here. And we're not going to touch the center here. We're going to touch just basically the sides here as well. Okay. So I'm going to define this whole entire area right about here. Right. Then just the lower lip here. Maybe a bit of the, the filtrum. Okay. If I want to, I can use, use a bit of like the flash tone. And just, just a little bit of that, that bit a bit here. Put some white. So more, more contrast and then uh, there are a few ways to play this up. You can actually even use this a bit just, just, to, just to dab it a bit. Just one speck of white here. Okay, so now if you want to move on to the eyes. Right, on the inside, you can see once I start to put in the shadows and define the contours of the eyes, you can see it becomes it's more defined. Uh, here it's still very soft. So I'm going to do the same thing. I've added a lot of the uh, flow enhancer here. So the paint itself, it, it's, it's, not, it's going to flow easier, <laughs> basically, right? So if you're seeing me enjoying this because the, the, the paint is responding accordingly to the, the way I wanted it to, the way I wanted to, exp, uh, to respond. So you can see right now, I'm just painting around it. This is very weak, so I'm going to just reinforce it a bit. Maybe just the inside of the eyes there. Give it a, a bit of a bloodshot look. Add a bit of the red. Let's plant it right in the inside there, and then maybe the lower part of the eye here. As you can see, I'm actually not, I do not need to, I do not need to reload more paint as I'm doing this. Well, as I said already, because this can, you can see the brush is actually very, uh, very long. It can take a lot of, it can take a lot of, uh, taking a lot of paint. So the bit of the red to sort of like define the boundary of the upper lip and the opening there. Okay. So after this, we can do it. Uh, take a bit of, I'm going to take a bit of the light blue, add a bit of the flash here. All right, and uh, it's not going to be thick. The paint here is not going to be thick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a very transparent, translucent look. All right, and also basically, right, the eyes are underneath the brows and the visor. So I don't need, I don't use white, pure white. I'm just going to just like wash it. Just going to just like, uh, just like wash it in a bit. Okay, this the whites here. Uh, it will the what happens is that the interesting thing is that it will. Re the opacity will reduce itself naturally. Okay. So if any of the anything, uh, let's say if any mistakes, I'll just wait for it to dry and it'll just paint over. So just keeping it dry, uh, just keeping it, uh, keep the paint light. Over here, okay. So you can see the effects um, I'm getting. It's actually very soft, nice and soft. Right. Okay. Next, the eyes. The eyes are easy. For the eyes, uh, I'm going to introduce another medium called a retarder medium. Well, retarder medium basically slows the paint down. Right. So it's a. Uh, it slows the drying of the paint. Really, but not slowing the paint down. It's uh, it slows the drying of the paint. It's like a gel. There's also a fluid liquid. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to for those of you guys who are not. Uh, very, your hands are not very stable, for example. So you want to paint the eyes and say, oh, I have to mess it up. Well, what I'm going to do is you can use the retarder. Uh, this basically allows, this is basically in soccer, we call injury time. You can actually use injury time to score goals, basically. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a bit of retarder medium. You're just going to paint this over. This is going to form a form, this is going to serve as a form of insurance. All right, so you can see it's a bit glossy. Don't worry about it, it will stay there for about a minute or so. And what I'm going to take a bit of blue, I'm going to take a bit of blue in this case. 
all right? Uh, add a bit of retarder medium as well, just a bit. Uh, you don't want to add too much retarder medium, right? Because it's going to affect the, the drying of the paint. So with this here, all right? Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use this and I'm going to just dab the, the, the eyes on, uh, paint the iris here. So what it does is the, the retarder medium basically, right, if you don't like the effect that you have here, all right, let's say if uh, you're not happy with this, all right, you can take a bit of, take a water and that's it. Uh, then we can restart again, all right, all right, if only relationships can be like this. <laughs> all right, so again, we have this and you basically, if you want to change it, Okay, so basically if you want to change the orientation of the eye, for example, you want to let it like look the other way. You can sort of, you can, you can, you can sort of, you know, you can sort of slowly dab the color in and just play around with it. And you can like sort of fiddle it around until you're, you're, you're totally happy with the result. Okay. So this is one of the, what do you call that? This is one of the ways you can sort of like, um, now I can do it for this side as well. A bit of retarder medium here. All right, so for 135 scale eyes, if you cannot paint it, uh, don't need to get it right in the first run. You can sort of like, you know, use this. And I'm, see, I'm, I'm just like dabbing it. So there are many ways to, to sort of like play around with this. All right, because it's not fully dried yet. So let's say, for example, you like mess it up like this. Oh, let's say, for example, you mess it up like this. You want to get the shape back. It's not fully dried yet. So you can take another brush, moist it with water. I'm using Series 7 brush because it's easy for pushing. So I can use this to sort of like, you know, clean it up. So if you take a close look, I can, I'm using this to sort of do a clean up here. I can go back again, maybe a bit of black, a bit of flow enhancer there from there, I'll just plug a bit of flow enhancer. And just paint the eyes on the top there, that's it. Okay, if I need to get the, re re regain some uh, of the iris, the pupil, sorry, I can go in again. too bright yep, and that's uh, you know just paint over this so I'm going to just uh, work on this side here okay so here Yep. So as a, I can use this as well as the time to also like so touch up on the other side of the eye as well. Okay. I'm gonna get a bit of the. I'm gonna just force in a bit of the shadows now uh, for the around the nose there. Bit of black bit of the crimson here and I'm gonna work very thin as well same thing here and just use this to sort of like define the the, the, the corners of the nose here okay the base of the chin the, the base of the lip the eye okay Right, so you guys can have a look at this for right the moment. Right, this so is what I've done. Yep. We have 
have any liter literature recommendation or something else? Because for me the colors that you are using are a little awkward. But uh, I guess there is something where you can study a little bit. Um, it's not work very nice. Well, very very simple. If you look at it, not really. It's uh, what colors work nicely. Well, it's, uh, we are not working with com color combinations. What we are doing is that we are tuning colors. So when you talk about tuning colors, it's basically um, if you have green, if the green is too strong, um, what you do is that you, you sort of tune it, you sort of uh, control it by putting it complementary. Okay. So for example, let's say I've got this green here. This green is, uh, let's say I have, um, okay, let's use deep green. Deep green is, uh, let's say this is particular deep green here. You find it's too strong, it's too greenish for your, for your, for your liking. So I want to sort of uh, control it. So I can use red. Uh, so red is a complementary of green. So every color has a complementary. So in, so the moment I take red, put it with the green, you'll notice that it starts to, the green becomes desaturated. Okay? So, so red here, and if I were to mix them together, you'll notice it suddenly changes and it becomes, uh, for example, olive drab. So this is how you sort of like counter each color using their complementary. If the color is too bright, it's not about adding black or not about adding white. It's looking at the complementary, you use that. So there are certain uses because, right, if you want to get shadows, shadows uh, means, right, it's, uh, the idea definition of shadows is not, a, it's not, like, it's not the absence of light. Shadow means it's a different, qual different value of light. That's what people, they don't understand. They think that everything in the shadow has to be black, but black is the absence of light. Absence of light means that's, it's not the case. In this case, right, shadows in this case in painting means it is a different quality of light. It is still in the light. So in order to get a different quality of green, you can either use like, for example, you can also you can either use like basically an olive green, all right, to get a highlight, or alternatively, you can also use, uh, you can use the complementary to tone it down. So either way, it will give you a, a, it will, it will give you a, a similar result, right, of, of controlling the saturation of the color. So what I'm doing here with the green and the orange here is basically using the orange to, to sort of like counter the, the, the green. Because uh, orange has red, right. right? And green basically has blue. So and green, green and blue, so basically when you take this and you throw the, throw the red, you take the red and you put it with the green, it will counter the green. You will, use the, you will also use the same effect as using red and putting it directly into the green. Yeah. The common color between these two colors is actually yellow, so it doesn't really matter. What you're doing is that you're taking the red from here to subdue the, the green from here. That's it. It's a, bit of, it's a bit of a chemistry in a sense, so you, you should understand that. So uh, when you talk about yellow, the complementary of yellow is violet, but the problem when you mix violet and yellow together, you get immediately you get brown. And it's a very ugly brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very ugly brown. So most people, they don't use, uh, they don't use, uh, they try to, for toning yellow or shading yellow, they try to avoid using brown or black. So to shade yellow, sometimes they use the analogous, which is the color next to it. It could be orange, or to a deeper extent, orange brown. And for highlighting, they can use even uh, much lighter, like a cap, uh, maybe a, like a lemon yellow, or it could be a, like an ice yellow in, for Viohold range. It could be Naples yellow to get the highlight from there, the different quality, yes. So it is, a, this, is a, this, is a, this is a different level. If you're going to pursue down that, that level, then it's a, that's where you're going more into the, what the guys in the fantasy painting are doing. All right. So for them, they, they, they learn about the color theory. And essentially, when you go down that path, it's turning into illustration in fine arts. But if you're taking it as a craft, then it's actually, it's a, if you're taking it as a craft, as a pastime hobby, you do not need to sort of like stress yourself up too much. You get burned out trying to learn all these things. So what you can also do as a complementary to this is to actually buy those paint sets that has, oops, sorry. Right, there's all those, uh, those paint sets that have, um, that have already sort of like uh, have the, 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 the color bars painted up for you. And all you need to do is to use that as a complementary to the, the, the pre-shading and that's it. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> so that's, that, is the, that is what you call an a, 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 a easy fix. That would be the easy fix. <laughs> Let's see if I want to have it easy. <laughs> no, it's, it's up to you because I, I, can't, I can't say that everybody should 
chut chut, uh, you know, or turn pro, you know. There's some guys who just, uh, I just want nice, decent results. I'm, I'm not looking to, to win, like, you know, competitions or whatever, right? But if you want to win competitions, yeah, then there's more that you need to do, <laughs> right? There, there's some guys who just, like, you know, I just want to build the kit out of the box, have fun, fun, some fun, and then, you know, something that I can show off, you know, I don't want to spend, like, 10 hours on the head, <laughs> or worse, still 14 hours on a holster. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it depends. Yeah, so it de it depends on uh, it depends on your your requirements. So I don't I don't expect everybody to paint to a very high level and standard. Um, I think for me, I would rather you uh, people understand the basics and know that it's actually very easy to get very very decent results. If you want spectacular, then you have to invest more time. And that's the that's the only difference, right? I mean, anybody can run 42 kilometers. I will take one year to run 42 kilometers. <laughs> Right? <laughs> so it's up to you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So yeah, so from here you can see that that's the that's the, the from here you can see this is the basic idea. And for, for 54 millimeters it's like for like 35 scale fit four millimeters for me it's much easier. So same same principle as well. So I'm gonna use the filbert brush. Alright? So same thing with the with bit of the olive wrap. Uh, sorry, not olive wrap. I can use olive wrap if I want to, but um, I'm going to use a few gray. You, you can also use gray actually, or you want can even use dark brown. It doesn't really matter. I, I can even use, like for example, I can use this dark brown here. So I'm not going to mix any of the greens. So I'm going to use a bit of dark brown here, and I can use it for the, the shadows as well. So I'm going to just like you know just paint this part here for the shadows for the 54 before the uh, 35 scale figure. So here, instead of using uh, green, I'm using an alternative. What I'm doing right now is I'm just filling up all the mid tones with this uh, this brown, and I'm working with very thin colors. Right, so you can see right now the, the main thing is to basically reduce the, the saturation of the gray, the dull the dullness of the gray using with this with this method. Right? So we have the uh, And uh, we can move on. If you want, I'm gonna make a flash tone much quicker. So I'm not gonna use the I'm gonna use a bit of orange here. So I'm gonna just like create like a dark flash tone here. A bit more wa warmer perhaps. So give it more life. So something along these lines here. Alright, like intermediate flash tone. And I can sort of like uh, use that. Unload it. Okay, make sure that it's, you can see that the, the, we are applying very thin film of paint here. You can see that very thin. Alright, and like watercolors you just brush over it. If you can try and we try to do it once over. And sometimes what I'll do so I'll also like sort of like dab the color on if I if I want to. See that? <laughs> I find this uh, way of doing it's uh, of painting it's uh, easier for diorama makers and armor modelers. So you can see right now just that's a bit, just by dabbing. So gray we have like the black undercoat. We have the white mist over, 
and then we use the white to sort of plug, pull out the highlights and then just a light layer of the, uh, the intermediate uh, flash tone you just like brush it over and this is the effect you're going to get so if you are like working with like 48 scale, 72 scale this is a very good technique for, for the figures right? you don't need to really go in there it's pretty decent and the, the, the best thing about it is that you still get the saturation of the colors that you want so if you want, to, if you want more then you have to like, you know, maybe add more layers in terms of the mid-tones more layers for the highlights so it's up to you until you, you keep adding until you're happy with the results and that's it but the main thing is to keep the colors uh, keep the paint as thin as possible We still got a half an hour more, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so you can see it's actually very quick. <laughs> so I told you within two hours to get two hits, it's actually very quick. So you can see this is actually the, uh, the results are very, so you can get pretty modest results using this. Yep. So anything else uh, with this, uh, you, can start to, you can start to detail from here because the general colors are there and we can start to detail. So detailing, this is, this is the part where the work sort of like, the, 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 uh, the work starts to slow down a lot. That's where I will start to perform more, more corrections to the head. But as you can see with the, with, uh, the, way, I, with the way I paint, you can see I'm generating a lot of tones at the, at the same time. So I'm going to add a bit of the, uh, the pink now. And I'm going to just uh, use the, this color here, all right, for the nose. So in, in, in terms of the painting style, what we had initially uh, with the first pass is just like, it's what you call a la prima, which is the first step. So we just, it's almost like a, a, a first coat to just the first uh, pass of the paint. So now we are, well, at this stage now, I'm, what I'm doing, I'm going, I'm progressing into the refinement. So as you can see, I'm, I'm working with the with a, with a, with now with a, line, a liner brush. This is the pointed brush, the round brush. And you notice the colors I'm, I'm applying. You can see that I'm sweeping it upwards towards the front there. So the idea of sweeping is basically following this boundary here, laying it by the side, and then moving up this way. And if there's certain areas here that, is, uh, that get sort of like, you know, if there's any boundaries, I'll try to soften it. But if you work, if you use like uh, if you use this method of working, uh, if you are working like this, uh, it's advisable to actually use a bit of flow enhancer because that will help. So that will prevent the the brush from producing a lot of watermarks, and that's the one thing that we try to avoid when painting using like a lot of uh, we're working with high dilutions, all right. So with high dilutions, you want to avoid watermarks. So add a bit of flow enhancer, and then I'm going just going to just follow from here, and I'm going to add on the opacity from here. So you can see right now, I'm just going to focus more in terms of the shadows there. Right about here, you can see the 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 boundaries emerging. This for the lip here. The nose. All right, I'm gonna just we'll go in now a bit of the brown and a bit of a bit of a grayish brown here. I'm just gonna use this to paint the the lower part of the the tear back. Okay. Okay, I'm here going to paint for the other side. I'm going to mix a bit of the uh, English khaki with the black to perhaps get the brows here, eyebrows. Okay, a bit of retarder medium just to, I don't have a flow enhancer, so I'm going to use a retarder medium instead to help me sort of like, you know. Okay, 
Okay, so we got a brow here. Okay, we're gonna define a bit more on the nose, the low, especially the lower part here, the lower eye bag. This is the shadow area here. I'm just gonna just run it through like this. Okay. Right. Maybe you just define a bit of the lower eye, the eye back now. The tear back a bit. So check the colors. Make sure it's not too bright. Highlight here. Some highlight here. So a bit of the highlight on, on the mouth here. This is the, this is the muscle coming up. So I'm gonna do so I'm gonna use a bit of the white here. And sort of like, you know, put a speck of white right at the tip of the nose just to create the illumination. The bowl shape of the mouth up here. And perhaps maybe a bit on the, on the, on the lip as well, some highlights on the lip. And the chin. Right, so this is going to help us to sort of like pull the... The entire face out. So you can see from here, if I'm from here, you can see once I start to place in, strategically place the highlights. You can see the whole thing sort of like pulls up, lifts up. So as you work with the highlights, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of people tend to overdo it. They sort of like take the white and they spread it too wide until the whole face becomes chalky. So it's very important to know that as you apply the highlights, the area gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So imagine it's, a, it's concentric coming in until you hit to a point like this, like the top of the volcano, the peak there. So that's where the pure white is going to be. If you want to have like strong, strong, what they call that, uh, contrast, that's what, how you should be, uh, that's how you should be approaching in terms of how do you add, uh, you add your highlights. Yep. Okay. So, um, well, um, I think it's a more or less I'm done. <laughs> so I think we'll just use the remainder of time for a Q&A. <laughs> yep. If you guys have anything. So I'm here for another half an hour. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. Thank you for not falling asleep. <laughs>